robes glowing in a snowy landscape. Old-fashioned lamps illuminating a dusky meadow. Or telephones by a beach, their receivers suspended in midair. For the past six years, Rune Gineroson has spent his winters scouting for remote locations around the city of Stavanga. He's looking for sites of pristine natural beauty, which he transforms into large-scale installations using everyday objects. In this case, those objects are reading lamps. His work explores basic questions about people and their environment. When man invented fire, uh, that was the moment uh, where we started to reflect because we sat down around the bonfire with, the, with a lot of people uh, just looking into the fire and just by the magic of the fire we started to think about our own existence and reflect upon you know why are we here and all the big questions that started then so 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 that's also an illusion of the light. Gunnarsson has shown in galleries all over the world his works fetch prices up to 10,000 euros For all of his projects, he's had to travel more than 500 kilometers from Oslo. Norway only has 5 million inhabitants, but much of its landscape is developed. It can take days before Gunnarsson finds the right setting, a place without as much as a hut or a path in sight. To unfold their dreamlike quality, the objects he photographs must appear to be in total seclusion. It's what gives the pictures their subtext. In a modern society, communication has changed. Uh, it, it's fast. Uh, in, if you just go back to when these phones were invented, everyone in Norway had this exact phone. No one else had them. And it's kind of a, quite a, a communistic way of thinking. You know, if you're going to have a phone, it's this one. Uh, but today, it's, it's something completely different. You, you have uh, hundreds of models to choose from. And I think it also tells something about how we used to communicate and how we communicate today. Maybe we should communicate slower, you know. Uh, I would like so. Once Gunnarsson has found a suitable setting, he has to haul his objects there. He carries them on foot over difficult terrain. It takes him two days to mount 160 lamps in this tree. He stages the image with care, ensuring that the balance of light is just right. He also has to hide all the power cables to lend the photo an eerie atmosphere. The lamps need 8,000 watts of power, so Gunnarsson has set up a generator. He uses an analog plate camera with extremely high resolution. The final image will be placed onto a large screen. I want people to get in close and see everything at the smallest details and, and for me that is important. Not just so much about the lamps, but people start all of a sudden looking at you know, the grass, you know, because they can see it you know, on the picture, really crisp and sharp. And the small details in nature is all of a sudden something they pay attention to, which they wouldn't have done if just walking through it. No automatic shutter release, no auto-correction. A plate camera photographer needs to know exactly what he's after. Setting up the shot takes two hours and timing is key. If it's too dark, it'll look like a Christmas card. Gunnarsson needs to shoot during the so-called blue hour. The dusky light has transformative qualities. In transition, there is something magical happening. And for me, that's the point where, where, where the light and the nature works perfectly together. So when it's completely dark, it looks really awful. But, you know, that little moment of transition is most interesting. And every human has been uh, mesmerized by this. The artist takes eight shots. Later, he'll pick his favorite image and make just five prints. The low edition is not a marketing strategy. The objects Rune Gunnarsson photographs may be everyday items. The images they evoke, however, question the wisdom of mass production.